coffee day today. I've been indoors all day um, during this lockdown period, but I hope you're all well. And I hope that um, we'll be soon coming out of this lockdown and get back to do some playing. I've been asked um, a few times about my bass, my equipment. So I thought today I'd do a kind of a short thing about my original bass, what they call, what people tend to call <coughs> the Woodstock bass. And here it is, um, I can show it to you. Let me just get rid of some of this stuff here. Um, that's it, so you can see it. Here it is, it's a 1962 jazz bass, Fender jazz bass, and I've <coughs> actually had this since 1962, but I didn't buy it new, I bought it second hand from, uh, we're doing a gig up in um, Norfolk in the United Kingdom, that is, and the support band there, the bass player, had this bass. And he just got it from a school teacher who um, was giving up. And um, I traded this bass for my 1960 P bass and 15 pounds. That bass player went on to be a very successful singer in Mock the Hoople, Ian Hunter. Um, Ian Hunter still got my P bass, as far as I know, and the last time I saw him, he said to me, um, could he have a royalty instead of the £15 he paid for me for this, this particular bass? As you can see from the picture, I'm going to try and hold it up. Oh, try and hold it up. It's, um, it's quite well worn. Nowadays, people buy them, don't they? You know, a relic. But this, this was um, pretty pristine in 1962 when I got it. In fact, I kept it in a, in a velvet uh, bag in the guitar case and cleaned it every night. But as you can see, it's uh, pretty well worn here from the <coughs> constant wear and tear. And um, the back, what they call belt buckle wear. <laughs> um, probably not quite belt buckle wear, but uh, slightly more than that. But otherwise than that, it's um, in perfectly good condition. And um, <coughs> this is the base that I used on just about every record and every show with 10 years after in its heyday. And um, that's quite a few shows, quite a few miles. It's probably got more history than I have in actual fact. If you look at it, um, a lot of people know this bass. A lot of people have asked me about it, as I said. Um, you can see I, I'd show a picture of, of a few people. Jimi Hendrix played it. Here's a picture of him. I'll put it up on behind me. Um, who else? Um, I, it appeared in the Eurovision Song Contest. A friend of mine borrowed it and played bass on that. He didn't win, but that's nothing to do with this particular instrument. Um, and it's travelled the world with me. It's travelled everywhere and just about every dent and mark I, I could almost tell you about. This is obviously wear, wear and tear. On the top here, which I don't think you'll be able to see, but I'll show it anyway. Um, it's. Um, it's sort of melted varnish, and the story behind that was we, we were doing a show in LA in the early days, travelling around in a panel van, and um, decided to go from LA to the next gig in, in Phoenix, Arizona, where, we, <coughs> funny enough, we were playing with the Grateful Dead. And we deci I decided to go in the van with the roadies, and, and uh, we decided we'd drive through Death Valley. Well, I didn't realise the back of the van didn't have air conditioning when, when we got to the gig. It had melted the varnish and that's where the varnish got melted here and along the back the various parts were, oh here in particular a good spot. Still you can't see it but um, it melted the varnish. So, so I say every dent and every picture tells a story. It's not been changed at all. Um, it's as it is. Um, I was breaking a lot of strings so what I did was I put leather in, the, in here to try and stop the string breaking, but that was my heavy-handed playing that did it. I don't break strings now. And eventually, in about 1960, 1977, I'm sorry, I took these plates off. And um, that's, that's about it. I've had two other jazz basses of the same ilk, but this is the, this is the original one, and this is the one that I kept. Um, the other two basses, Jimmy Page has got one of those basses, and um, another gentleman, um, and the other one I think has been sold twice. In fact, someone contacted me a few months ago asking me if I wanted to buy it back, but uh, I'm, I don't need any more basses, and um, uh, I saw I didn't, so I declined. Now, what happened with this bass, maybe 10 years ago, is um, 
it became too valuable to take on the road. And, and I, so I started using other bases. I do have other bases. I have, in actual fact, 30 bases. Uh, but this is my baby. This is my favourite. This has seen more. This has seen uh, life. It's played most festivals with me. Uh, well, all festivals with me, in fact. And um, it's travelled the world. And it could tell a story. If the bass could talk from, you know, from tree to plank of wood with wires nailed to it. Um, maybe there's a story there. The story of the base but as I say it became too valuable and around that time I started using other bases um, which I still play I play I still play Warwick I've had a long affair with Warwick bases too but uh, the base centre in London via the, the owner Barry Morehouse contacted me and said um, what we'd like to do is is to do a tribute base to you a signature base um, like your fender and what we can do we can take this Base here as I'm showing the contours of it, and um, do an exact copy of it for you using computer graphics. So, who could turn it down? So I said, yeah, that that would be great. And uh, I have my other base here, which I now use most of the time anyway. So here we are. The one with the strap is my original base. Um, let me move the strap if I can. No, I can't. Oh, here we go. No, it's not. <laughs> Even I got confused. The one, the one in the, this hand. No, this hand. No, this hand. Actually, this. You know, when you're trying to watch a screen, it's difficult. But this is my original base, and this is my signature base. So you can see it's very much, pretty much the same. Looks the same. Same things on it. You'll notice that the the headstock is slightly different, and that's how you'll recognise it from the original. But it's a lovely base too, and um, I use that a lot of the time. In fact, let me just show you. Plays the same, <coughs> and it's great, it's wonderful. But anyway, back to the original. Here it is. Everybody asked me about it. Last time I met um, Peter Green, I said, to, we did a show with Peter, and I said to Peter, you know, have you been on yet, man? And he said, oh, I'm not sure, have we? And then he said to me, you still got that old jazz bass? I said, so, yes, I have. Rory Gallagher asked me the same thing. It's become a bit of a joke within the business, this old jazz bass. But there it is, as seen on Woodstock, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good week, have fun, um, stay safe out there, and let's get back to doing some music out on the road, because that's the one thing I'm missing more than anything else. Okay, see you soon. Bye.